Okay, so this week we're going to be talking about differential equations. So this is going to uh, link off of what we were doing uh, last week involving eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get uh, start with an example. So if we talk about the differential equations in the most general sense, you have a derivative of y sub n components multiplied, which is equal to a matrix multiplied by those components. Okay. So let's just go ahead and start with an example. This is the easiest way to get this done. So. <clears throat> Let's say we have y, we'll stick with a second order derivative, I mean a, not a second order derivative, first order derivative, but it's going to be a two by two system. So y1 prime is going to equal um, 3y1 plus 4y2, and y2 prime is going to equal 3y1 plus 2y2. And we have to have uh, some initial conditions for this problem. So our initial conditions will be that y, now 1 of 0, is going to equal 6. And y2 of 0 is going to equal 1. Okay. So this is our system of differential equations with our initial conditions. Great. So. <coughs> What's going to eventually happen is that our y1 and our y2 is going to equal c1 e to the lambda 1 times t times v1 plus c2 e to the lambda 2t multiplied by now, this is going to extend from problems that we were doing last week in the sense that <clears throat> last week we were looking for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, all right, this works with real distinct eigenvalues. We'll, we'll discuss a little bit about when you have repeated eigenvalues, complex eigenvalues, but just for this example, I want to stick with real distinct eigenvalues. So, if you have two real distinct eigenvalues, the eigenvalue would be lambda 1 and then the other eigenvalue would be lambda 2, okay? Now your eigenvectors, that's going to be your v1 and your v2, okay? So first, you solve for the eigenvalues, and um, then from the eigenvalues, you solve for the eigenvectors, okay? Well, once you've solved for the eigenvectors, then what you're going to do is you're going to use these initial conditions, and this is going to solve for your C1 and your C2. Then you're going to have a complete solution to the problem. We had a discussion about this last week where you know, your eigenvalues can be, um, <coughs> I mean, they're multiple, multiplied by a scalar. So they can be infinite in many different things. Well, the choice of those eigenvalues will uh, uh, determine the C1 and the C2, and uh, you will get a unique solution to the problem. <clears throat> okay, so step one of this problem is just find the eigenvalues. Right. So why don't I write this thing down as a matrix, and we'll look at it that way. <clears throat> so if I write this as a matrix, we have y1, y2, and then prime is going to equal 3, 4, 3, and 2. That's going to be multiplied by y1 and y2. So this is the A that we're going to be looking for that's going to give us our eigenvalues and our eigenvectors. So uh, step one. <coughs> is going to be the eigenvalues. So to, to find the eigenvalues, we're going to take the determinant of A minus lambda I, right? And we're going to set that equal to zero. <clears throat> right? 
that's going to be lower than term one. That's going to be three minus lambda, four, three, and two minus lambda. Okay. So taking the determinants of the, uh, this one, remember we're cross multiplying, so that would equal. <coughs> Okay, so that's going to be 3 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda. And then we have minus the 3 times 4, so that's minus 12. Okay, okay so the first term of this would be 6. That's easy. Uh, and then negative 2 lambda and negative 3 lambda, that's going to come out to a minus 5 lambda. And then plus lambda squared minus 12. Well, this isn't in the previous format right now, so let's reorder this so it looks like a total quadratic. Uh, so we can combine the 6 and the negative 12. <coughs> so that would be lambda squared minus 5 lambda minus 6. All right, now we got to think about how are we going to factor this thing. Um, that would equal Lambda plus 1 multiplied by lambda minus 6. So we're going to set that equal to 0. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't matter what order you do this in. I'm just going to follow my notes. I'm going to say that well, lambda 1 is going to equal 6. And let's just say that lambda 2 equals 1. Okay, that's the first step of the problem, just finding the eigenvalues. All right, so now we're going to move on to step two. And step two is going to be the eigenvectors. And I want it to equal 
zero, zero. This is just like finding a null space. Okay? Well, this is your free variable right here. And uh, think about it this way. What is this equation right here telling you? It's telling you that x1 minus 4 over 3x2 is going to equal 0. Or that x1 equals 4 over 3x2. So <clears throat> that tells me that my first eigenvector, v1, is going to equal Four-thirds and one. Okay, and so the way to think about this is, if you had this matrix act upon this guy right here, well, the, the one and the four-thirds and the negative four-thirds and one they cancel each other out. Okay, so that's v one. Right. <coughs> so that, we're still on step two. Okay, uh, second part of step two. Really cool. it's step two part B, I guess. Right. And we're going to solve for a minus lambda 2, now i, e2, and set that equal to 0. Okay, so where's my um, lambda 2? That's a negative one. <coughs> okay, so a minus lambda 2i will equal, okay, so that's 3 minus negative 1. And that's 4, that's 3, and that's 2 minus negative 1. Okay, so that's my a minus lambda 2 i. So 3 minus negative 1 is going to be 4. A 4, a 3, and a 3. Now, I can take the top of this problem, I can multiply it by negative 3 fourths, and add it down to the bottom, and I'm going to get 0. Okay? It's going to completely eliminate the bottom. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know what, I'm going to do this in one step. Okay, so I can completely eliminate the bottom row, and then I can take the top row, and I can just divide the top row by 4. Okay? So what are we going to get <clears throat> after we do these operations is 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay? And we want to think that that one has to act upon V2, and that has to equal 0 and 0. Okay. So, <clears throat> I can prove this problem. Uh, this is the pivot, this is the free variable. Uh, X1 is the pivot, X2 is the free variable. So what's this problem really saying? This, this problem is saying that X1 plus x2 equals 0, or that x1 equals negative x2. So you take the free variable and switch it, and switch the sign, basically. So <clears throat> that would mean that v2 would equal negative 1, 1. Because if I had this matrix act upon this v2 right here, well, 1 times negative 1 and 1 times positive 1, they cancel each other out, and it just goes to zero. Okay, okay so we've gotten to the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors, and now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for C1 and C2. So where are we sitting at at this point of the problem? <coughs> this is where we're at. So. Now y1, y2, this was equal c1, e to the end of 1, t, v1, plus c2, e to the end of 2, t, v2. Okay. This is going to be equal now c1, and you know, what did I pick for my number 1? That, that was 6. And so that's e. To the 16, multiplied by b1, which is going to be 4 thirds and 1. Okay. Now plus c2. Uh, my lambda 2 is negative 1, so this is just going to be e to the minus 2. And then multiplied by negative 1 and 1. Okay. So at this point of the problem, 
where are we at? We figured out what lambda one and lambda two are. That's step one, finding the eigenvalues. And then we found V1 and V2, which are our eigenvectors. And so now we're going to use the initial conditions of the system of differential equations to solve for C1 and C2. Okay? So C1 and C2 are the last guys that we're looking for. <coughs> So, step three. Here's the initial conditions. Right. So, what were our initial conditions that we were dealing with? We had the uh, So since the beginning of the semester, I keep on telling you that the Gaussian elimination is going to keep coming back, it's back. So <clears throat> let's look at this as a matrix. So what is this thing really? This is 4 thirds, 1, negative 1, 1. Now acting upon C1, C2 is going to be equal 6 and 1. Okay, so this is the system that we're going to have to solve to get to that um, with the C1 and the C2. Um, so that's basically just taking this equation right here that we're looking at and let's form it into a matrix. Well, I, honestly, I don't like the way this matrix looks. So I'm going to write it as an augmented matrix and we'll go through the steps of uh, Solving the system. So <clears throat> I'm going to write it like this. It's an augmented matrix. It's a four thirds, negative one, 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 augmented with six and one. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is remember I want to turn this side into the identity matrix. I'm going to have to multiply. <coughs> times negative 3 divided by 4 to multiplication, and we're going to have to add down this. Okay, so the top is not going to be affected, 4 thirds, that's negative 1, and 6. I'm trying to turn that guy into a 0. So, <coughs> um, what we go in the next position? So if I multiply, this negative 1 by negative 3 over 4. That's going to turn it into a positive 3 over 4. So a positive 3 over 4, and you can think of this 1 as a, a 4 over 4. So 3 over 4 plus 4 over 4 is 7 over 4. <clears throat> okay, and so taking 6 and multiplying it by negative 3 over 4. 
Uh, so six divided by four has to be three halves. That's negative nine over two. So negative nine over yeah, negative nine over two plus one. So negative nine over two plus two over two. So negative nine over two plus two over two is negative seven over two. Okay, 7 over 4 and negative 7 over 2. All right, what I want to do at this point in the problem, I want to turn this guy into a 1. That's going to be the easiest thing for me to do. So I'm going to multiply this bottom row times 4 divided by 7. Okay, So 4 divided by 7. <coughs> So that just comes out to negative 2, and the 6 gets left below. Okay, so now I want to eliminate the negative 1. And uh, the easiest way to do that, add up words. So that's 4 divided by 3, 0, 0, 1. That's negative 2. And so if I add my negative 2 to the 6, that's just going to be a 4. Almost there. And so what am I going to do at this point on the problem? I'm going to multiply this uh, top component by 3 divided by 4. Okay, so 3 divided by 4 is going to turn that into a 1. And 3 divided by 4 is going to turn that guy into a 3. <coughs> Zero, zero, one, augment, negative two, and three. So that tells us that C1 is going to equal three, and then C2 is going to equal negative two. Okay. After all of that, how do you know you have a right answer? That's step one. Yes, we're in step one. write down the answer. So we have y1, y2. Alright, so c1 is 3, that's 3 e to the 16 multiplied by 4 thirds and 1. Okay. Alright, then minus 2, this is e to the minus t. not exactly the greatest format to write this thing in. So let's write it down as just one matrix. <coughs> that's going to be, okay, so if I multiply that inside of there, that's going to be 4, e to the 16. It's going to be a 3, e to the 16. My negative and negative, that's going to turn it into a positive, e to the minus t. Minus two. Right. So we've got to pop the part where we think this is most likely our answer. But we have to ask ourselves a question like how do we verify that? Okay, so <coughs> the original problem that we we're dealing with. this right here, okay? It says the y1, y2 prime is going to equal the exact same thing as the matrix acting upon y1 and y2. So what this means is that the differential operator does what the matrix does. So if you take this guy's derivative, it will give you 
the exact same thing as the matrix actually working on, or matrix performing on. Or, yeah. Okay. And so we're going to take our answer right here, and we are going to take its derivative, and we are going to have the matrix act upon it, and we better get the same thing. That's actually how you check your answer. So. <coughs> Let's, have the, let's make the derivative act on it first. And so, say we were going to take the derivative with respect to time of 4 e to the 6t plus 2 e to the minus t and 3 e to the 6t minus 2 e to the minus t. So uh, the derivative of e to the 60 is just going to spit out 6. So that's going to be 24 e to the 60. And the derivative of this guy right here is just going to spit out a negative. That's negative 2 e to the minus t. And that's going to turn into 18 e to the 60. And taking the derivative of that, it's going to spit out another minus sign turning that guy into a positive. Let's take our original matrix and let's have it act upon it. So that's the derivative right there. That's this side of the problem. All right, now we're going to take this side of the problem and we're going to have it act upon our solution. And these, these things have to be equal. So 3, 4, 3, 2. Acting upon now 4, e to the 16 plus 2 e to the minus t, 3 e to the 16, and minus 2 e to the minus t. Okay. Okay. So, all right, now, <coughs> this is what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine that this matrix is going to act upon right there, this, this component first. Okay? So now 3, 4 act upon 4, 3. So this 3 and that 4, that turns into a 12. And a 4 and this 3, they also turn into a 12. So 12 plus 12 is 24. You do the All right. Now, um, now you imagine 3 and 4 acting upon 2 and negative 2, like that. And so what it, would that give you? So 3, 4, and so 3 acting upon a 2 would be a 6, 4 acting upon a negative 2 will give you uh, negative 8. So you have a 6 and a negative 8, that turns into a negative 2. So now we're at the bottom row. And so you imagine the bottom row acting upon these guys right here. So 3 times 4 is going to be a 12. Okay? And then 2 times 3 is going to be a 6. So it ends up being 12 plus 6, that's going to be 18. So 3, 2, acting upon those guys right there. So what is that going to be? 3 times 2 is going to be 6. 2 times negative 2 uh, is a negative 4. So 6 minus 4 is 2. OK, so if you see this right here, you see that the derivative um, acting upon our solution and the matrix acting upon the solution, they're, they, they really are the same thing. The matrix is actually performing uh, the same operation as the derivative. So that's how we know that um, this solution is the solution to the system of differential equations. Oh, there's one other question that we got to ask to ourselves. Uh, does it match the initial conditions? Um, so if we ask ourselves, does this match the initial conditions, 
So this is the solution that we got to. And so um, does it actually match the initial conditions? Well, what if I plug zero into this? I'm going to get two plus four, which is six. Then I plug zero into this one, it's three minus two, which is one. So yeah, it does satisfy the initial conditions. Uh, <coughs> and it satisfies this operation right here, where the derivative equals the exact same thing as the matrix acting on it. So, that's how you know that you really got a, 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 a solid answer, is that not only are your initial conditions satisfied, but the derivative and the matrix actually perform the same operation when they do literally the exact same thing. So that's how you know you got the good solution.